So today I'm going to be showing you how to put together a travelling postcard. I'm planning to do a whole mini series on travelling mail. The reason I'm doing this is because when people start out doing travelling mail, there is sometimes confusion as to what you put on a travelling postcard, how you set it off, what you're meant to do with it. So hopefully in this video I'll be able to cover a lot of questions I get on travelling postcards. So I'm going to get straight into it and start off with how to set up your own travelling postcard. So the first thing you need obviously is postcards or just one if if you just want to set off one. I found that setting off more means you're more likely to get more back because this is a hobby where a lot of people are involved and there's a lot of traveling to do there is a high chance of the postcard going missing so even though you may send 10 postcards out you might only get five back to me that's a risk that i'm willing to take because when you get them back it's such a nice thing to have this postcard has traveled around the world it's not just gone from a to b it's gone as many places that can fit on the postcard basically so when you're choosing a postcard to send the best sort of postcard to go for is one that is the average postcard size. Paper Chase do a lot of postcards in this size. So these postcards are 15 centimeters by 10.5 centimeters. Obviously that's not the only size that you can do. You could send any size you want, but the only thing you need to consider is the envelope size that you're gonna have to send it in. With traveling mail, you have to put them in an envelope. So you don't want to have to use a giant envelope to send it. For example, I have this size, which is obviously a shaped postcard. I also have this size postcard card which is a bit bigger. The most important thing about choosing the right size is just so it doesn't get as damaged when it's traveling. Obviously the bigger the postcard the more likely it's going to get bent and scuffed in the mail. So yeah that's not a necessity but it's something to consider. The next thing you need is an info sheet to attach to the postcard and this sheet stays with the postcard at all times. It travels around with the postcard so everyone knows what they need to do with the postcard when they receive it. You can of course write your own but I have actually made a printable on the Facebook group and on it it has has all the information that someone who is taking part in the traveling postcard might need to know. So on it I've put how it works, add your name, the date and where you're from on the back of the postcard. Feel free to add a little sticker or something decorative next to your name. Send it on to another one of your pen pals to do the same and once the back is full send it back to me. Pop me an email or message me on Instagram to let me know and I'll give you my address to send it back to. So that is the idea of traveling postcards. The only expense that you have to pay is buying the postcard and one set of postage to send it to the first person. You don't have to take part in other people's but obviously it does benefit everyone if everyone takes part in each other's. The other thing I like about this is you don't give your address to loads of people, you just give it to the last person who contributes to your postcard. If you are under the age of 18 or still living at someone else's house then it is best to get their permission before you give your address out to people. There's then a small section about rules and they are do not keep this postcard, keep all decorations small, remember that more than one person is going to be adding to this postcard and always send the postcard in an envelope. So obviously don't just stick a stamp on this side and write your bit and send it to the next person. Always put it in an envelope because if not there's not going to be enough space on the back for everyone to take part. And then underneath the rules there's a little section to add your contact info which is your Instagram and email. If you don't have Instagram you could just put your name there. And then right at the bottom I've just put please keep this sheet with the postcard at all times so the next person you send it to knows what to do. So once you've printed off this little sheet you just need to attach it to the postcard with some washi tape or a paper clip. I prefer using a paper clip just because then the person can take the actual sheet off if they want to you know move it around to write on it and then reattach it afterwards. But I have some people attach it like a flap with some washi tape and stuff. You then ideally want to add your information so you want to put your name and the date and where you're from so you have a date as to when it started and you also know where it started as well and other people do when they're contributing. I know that some people choose not to do this which is totally fine but I think it's better to have some sort of starting point for your postcard so I'm going to do that now and I'll show you what I've done when I've done it. So this is what I've added to the postcard. I've added my name, where I'm from, the date, and also my Instagram, which is optional, but it is obviously a nice way to put a face to a name for all the people who've contributed. Obviously you don't want to add too much information. You don't want to take up too much space. So I've just added some cloud washi and some little bird washi as well, just to add a bit of color and interest so it's not just writing on the back. And that is it when it comes to how to start a traveling postcard. After you've done all that, you just want to take a photo of it and share it on the traveling mail 
Facebook group to find the next person to send it to. Something to take into account when you are sharing on the group is if you don't want to send abroad or you don't want to send out of your country, make sure to put UK only or Europe only or US only. That way people know where you're happy to send to. If you did want the postcard to travel to just one area, so just the UK or just the US, you can always add an extra bit of information on the back of the info sheet. But yeah, when you're posting on the group, if you're not happy to send out of the UK because postage is a bit too expensive, just make sure to put it on the post on Facebook so people know. And then once you have someone to send it to, you pop it in an envelope and send it off to them. And that is it. That is your postcard. It's off on its travels. It might not be back to you for over a year. When it does get back to you, it is so awesome. <laughs> I will show you some of the finished ones I have received. In the whole time that I've done traveling mail, I have only received two postcards back. And I have probably set off around 30 postcards, but that doesn't mean they're lost or they're never going to get back to me. It just means they're taking a little bit longer to travel. So these are the two finished postcards that I received back. I think I got this one back first and then this one was a little later. This one I'd sent out before the traveling mail group came about and this one was after the traveling mail group and this one started in Brighton with me. It's also been to Kent, it's been to Brandon in the USA, Belgium, Hastings in the UK, Newcastle in the UK, Wiltshire in the UK. So this one has been to multiple places in the UK and also over to US and Belgium. This one has been again started in Brighton with me. It's been to the Netherlands, London, London, Devon, Nottinghamshire I think that is, Kent, Bath, Buckinghamshire, Romford. So yeah those are two finished postcards. Like I said these are the only two postcards I've received back yet but that does not mean that the other ones that I've sent out won't get back to me. One last thing to mention before I finish this video is goodies. When people send on a postcard to another person sometimes they will send goodies with the postcard. I want to put it out there straight away. They aren't mandatory to take part in traveling mail. You don't have to send goodies to people. That is just an added bonus that some people send. So yeah, don't feel pressured to send extra bits and pieces with the postcard for the next person. But if you do want to send goodies along with the postcard for the next person, then I found that there's two ways that people do it. One is just sending stuff in the envelope and whatever's in the envelope is for the next person. The other way that I've seen, which I think is really good, is a take and replace envelope. So there's an envelope in the envelope, like a small envelope, and on the envelope it will just say take and replace and you do exactly what it says. You have a look in the envelope, if there's stuff in there that you want then you can take it and then you can replace it with something from your stash. But yeah, I think I've covered pretty much everything I can think of to do with traveling postcards. If you do have any other questions though, be sure to let me know below and I will do my best to get back to you. If you want to join the Traveling Mail Facebook group, I will leave that link below as well. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.